Hello and welcome to the Monday, September 18th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from New York City, New York. Let's start today talking about a breach. Now, I don't often talk about breaches in this uh, podcast, but sometimes there are very specific lessons that can be learned from these breaches. And of course, it's always helpful if companies come forward with some of the details. The breach I'm talking about here was against a retool, and it certainly was one of the more targeted and specific uh, breaches. One risk it highlights is that not all multi-factor authentication is actually phishing resistant. Now I will link to the detailed description and retools blog in the show notes so you can read up on all the details. I don't quite agree with the headline here that well when multi-factor authentication isn't actually multi-factor authentication Google Authenticator is by all means multi-factor authentication, but it's not phishing resistant, meaning that if an ad- if a victim is entering their credentials, their username, password, and one of their one-time passwords from the Google Authenticator into the wrong website, that website may be able to reuse these credentials. Or in this case, the victim actually gave a one-time password to the attacker over the phone. This is uh, difficult to sort of fix with uh, training because uh, users often don't quite understand the implications of giving one of their one-time passwords over the phone versus entering them into the legitimate uh, website. But a distinction that has to be made, if you're really concerned, if these are critical internal systems, then Google Authenticator may not be the right solution for you, but something stronger and phishing resistant, like for example, Passkeys or Fido2 may be a better option for you than simple Google Authenticator. The other problem with sort of these one-time password schemes like Google Authenticator, and uh, Google Authenticator, again, is sort of just the uh, conventional name being used uh, for uh, this uh, particular uh, algorithm, is also that the Authenticator can be copied. Now, this doesn't appear to have really been sort of played a role here in this uh, particular case, but uh, for example, if you do need Authenticators to be synced across different systems, then also look into how difficult it is to, for example, break into this sync system and add additional devices to these synced accounts. Password managers that also store these one-time passwords often have a, a better thought out system in how you enroll another device into the group of devices that are synced. So Uh, That's something for you to take into account as you are selecting a particular multi-factor authentication solution. And then, well, we've got a couple of vulnerabilities to talk about here. QNAP released an update for its operating systems for its disk storage devices. There is one vulnerability that's rated as high. It is a remote code execution vulnerability, but it does require authentication, which uh, should sort of mitigate some of the risk here somewhat. And talking a little bit about uh, more phishing resistant authentication methods, Apple announced that in its next operating system, macOS Sonoma, and the next version of iPadOS iOS, which should come out probably this coming week, Keychain, which stores passkeys, uh, will be able uh, to be accessed uh, by uh, browsers. And Google Chrome now is testing this in its latest beta version. So expect all of this to hopefully work uh, within a month or so when all the operating systems are released and also the latest version of Chrome has the new feature included. So far, only Safari has been able to take advantage uh, of uh, pass keys that were stored in the keychain. This is important because, well, keychain is then being used to synchronize pass keys across different devices. 
And we got uh, two quick cross-site scripting vulnerabilities to talk about. Uh, one is in the bulletin, the bulletin board. Apparently there is no patch available for it at this point. The other one with a patch available is by Fortinet in 40 OS and 40 proxy. Both of them, I wouldn't really consider all that uh, super serious, uh, but with cross-site scripting, it's always a little bit tricky to sort of estimate the severity of the vulnerability correctly. In both cases, they can likely be used uh, to sort of escalate privileges at least by basically tricking the administrator uh, to reveal some credentials or such via the cross-site scripting attack. Well, that's it for uh, today. Thanks for listening. and. Hope to talk to you again tomorrow unless something is going wrong with my flight tomorrow. And well, in that case, talk to you again on Wednesday.